Hello, good evening. Welcome to ITV News. This is Tuesday night's calendar. Yes, hello, good evening. Here are tonight's main stories. How we find Dad's killer, a daughter's plea for justice more than 30 years after her father's brutal murder. This person is still out there and after all this time, he may just feel like he's got away with murder. He could have spoken to somebody about this. Somebody out there must know something. What happened to Catherine? Five and a half years after a Halifax pensioner vanished without trace, her case is raised in Parliament. There are so many missing people out there. Um, actually, just making sure that we've got the resources so that we can try and get as many answers as possible. I'm at Elland Road, where Leeds United have a new boss, but can he do the job that both the fans and the board need him to do, which is saving the club from relegation? And flipping marvellous, the Sheffield Special School making the most of their new premises on Pancake Day. Welcome to the programme. First tonight, more than three decades after her father was murdered with an axe as he slept in their family home, a woman from Mansfield says she's desperate for his killer to finally be brought to justice. Kevin Childerley and his wife were attacked in their bedroom by an armed intruder in February 1990 while their five-year-old daughter Emma and her baby brother were just yards away in another room. Now it's hoped advances in technology as well as new witnesses can help to unlock the case and help track down and convict those responsible. Jonathan Brown's been speaking to Emma about her plea for help. He was my best friend. I was a daddy's girl. Definitely through and through, Daddy's girl. It's been 33 years since Emma's dad was taken away. She was just five years old and asleep in their family home the night an intruder armed with an axe broke in and changed her life forever. I just remember going to bed and being woken up in the middle of the night by a police officer who just burst into the room and said, get dressed, don't come downstairs, don't turn on any lights. They didn't have a clue what was going on. And then one day this social worker quite unprofessional, no empathy whatsoever. She just sort of came round and said, right, your dad's dead. Your mum's in hospital really ill. Kevin Childerley, who was 30, was in bed at home on Sherwood Street in Mansfield Woodhouse when he and his wife, Denise, were attacked in the early hours of February the 19th, 1990. Kevin sustained fatal head injuries while Emma's mother survived though she had to have one eye removed, as well as reconstructive surgery and 160 stitches. Two men were later charged with murder and attempted murder, but the case against them was discontinued before it reached a jury, leaving the likes of Kevin's late parents knowing their son's killer was still at large. I can't get over it. No way. I've got to know who did it and why. This 31-year-old news footage from the ITV archive seen by Emma today. Did you? For the first time. There's no way I want my mum to pass away in many, many years' time, still in the same circumstances where she just hasn't been able to get that closure and justice for what, what she was put through. To try to help bring a conviction, Nottinghamshire Police say they're reviewing evidence in the case following advances in forensic technology, but say help from witnesses is still key. Sometimes because of that passage of time, people have got new allegiances, people have moved on, moved to different areas. I'm just really keen now for those people to rethink and if they do have some information that was relevant to this investigation to come forward and talk to us. It's something we think about every day, but you either have to make something like this, make your break you. And I chose to make it make me. You know, I've chose to try and make my dad proud every day. For Emma, that's meant running a business in her father's name. This funeral directors in Lancashire bears his initials and she says draws on her experience of loss to console others in grief. All the while she's continuing to fight for those who killed him to be held responsible. I've made a promise to my mum and to my brother that I'm going to push this as far as I possibly can, get this as far and wide as possible because somebody out there must know something and I just really want those people to find it in themselves to speak up and just help us get this justice. Emma Childerley there, ending that report by Jonathan Brown. 
Next, the tragic case of Nicola Bully from Lancashire has shone a light on the number of missing people whose relatives can spend years not knowing what's happened to them. Nicola's body was found in the River Wire almost four weeks after she disappeared. Today, the MP for Halifax, Holly Lynch, expressed her condolences to the family as she opened a debate into the continuing mystery over the whereabouts of a pensioner from her own constituency. Well, our political correspondent Katie Oscroft joins us now from Westminster. Katie, what prompted this unusual step? Well, first of all, Ian, you're right, it is unusual, but Holly Lynch said she wanted as many people as possible to hear about 72-year-old Catherine Holsworth because she couldn't believe that she seemingly had disappeared without trace back in 2017. Now, Catherine was reported missing by her neighbours who realised they hadn't seen her for a few days. And bear in mind, she never left home without a walking frame and she needed medication. Now, on the 9th of September, back in 2017, she thought to have done something very ordinary, got on a bus bound for home, but really no one knows whether she made it back to where she lived. And it turned out the last confirmed sighting was the day before at Calderdale Royal Hospital, about three miles from her home. Now, these poignant but very scant details appear to be the last trace we have of a vulnerable woman. So Holly Lynch today, inside Parliament, uh, raised this case, told other MPs about it, said she wanted to keep the pressure up to find Catherine and the many others like her who go missing. There are so many missing people out there. Um, actually, just making sure that we've got the resources, the specialist training for our police officers and the wider partners that they work with so that we can try and get as many answers as possible for those families and loved ones left behind when someone does go missing. So that's what Holly Lynch thinks about it. Katie, what have West Yorkshire Police had to say? Well, Ian, West Yorkshire Police have in the past made appeals for information. They're grateful for this one and they say they will continue to do so. Somebody might know her, somebody, you know, they might not know her by uh, that name, you don't know, but just hopeful that there's some bit of information, a little bit more um, of a, a piece of a jigsaw that can help uh, find and locate Catherine for not just for us from West Yorkshire Police but for, for her family and friends. Well, the cases of Catherine and sadly Nicola Bully have served to highlight that there are many thousands of people who go missing every year and it's also highlighted the effect it has on the people who are left behind. Let's hope we can get some answers. Thanks very much indeed, Katie, live at Westminster. You're watching Tuesday night's calendar and still to come, the women get into grips with the menopause by learning to climb. And what with pancake day and a carpet of crocuses, anyone would think it was early spring, but we're back to average temperatures from tomorrow and it's going to feel a bit more like, well, late winter. Full forecast a little later on. Some more of the day's news now and a woman's appeared in court accused of attempting to murder three children in Huddersfield. The 34-year-old was arrested after a four-year-old girl, a two-year-old boy and a three-month-old baby boy were found with serious stab wounds at a house earlier this month. A provisional trial date has been set for the 17th of July. Two people have been arrested on suspicion of murder after a woman's body was found in Sheffield. Police forced entry to a property on Skelton Close yesterday morning and found the woman inside. A man and woman, both in their 40s from the Woodhall area, are being questioned and remain in police custody. Six people have now been arrested in connection with the murder of a teenager in Huddersfield. The 17-year-old boy was fatally stabbed in what police believe was a targeted attack in Kingsmill Lane in the early hours of yesterday. A 15-year-old boy and a 19-year-old man were arrested this morning on suspicion of murder. Two others, aged 14 and 37, who were arrested on Monday, remain in custody. Two women, aged 17 and 19, have also been questioned. There's been major disruption on the M180 in South Yorkshire today after the motorway was closed following a crash. Four vehicles, including two lorries, collided between junctions one and two on the eastbound carriageway at about half past 11 last night. Three people were treated for minor injuries and the road is still closed eastbound this evening for recovery work and emergency repairs to the road surface. And of course, you can keep up to date with that story on our website, the very latest itv.com forward slash calendar. 
The Department for Transport says that Doncaster Sheffield Airport could still be reopened for commercial flights, even if the airspace is downgraded. In a letter to South Yorkshire's Chambers of Commerce, officials said the airport could operate under an aerodrome traffic zone arrangement. Similar to many other airports, the Civil Aviation Authority has said that the managed airspace is due to lapse after Peel Group closed the airport in November. The ITV Evening News is coming up at 6.30. Here's a look at what's happening with Mary Nightingale. Coming up in the programme, tensions are heightened over Ukraine as Vladimir Putin pulls out of a major nuclear arms pact with the US. The move will be seen as an escalation ahead of the first anniversary of Putin's invasion. Today, the Russian president once again tried to claim he was trying to end the war in Ukraine. Also ahead... Good news for women going through the menopause as the cost of HRT is lowered. But what can be done about supply issues? The groundbreaking scheme that showed a four-day working week could actually prove more productive. And why you might be having a tough time finding tomatoes on your supermarket shelves. Will you join me for those stories and more at 6.30? Mary, thank you very much. Yes, no tomatoes. Couldn't I get didn't any. know it was a problem, but uh, uh, I'll tune in and find out why. Yeah, I couldn't get any at the weekend. Now, as the cost of heating, eating and travelling continues to rise, new research shows that almost a million people in Yorkshire are borrowing on credit cards to cover their basic essentials. And a survey by the Money and Pension Service found that many more people think they'll need to adopt a borrow-now-pay-later approach in the next few months. In a moment, we'll hear from a Leeds-based debt charity. But first, Emily Knight has been speaking to one family who are worried about spiralling debt. So you've got your tops and bottoms for every boys and girls. You've got Summer Howell, a mum of two, regularly visits baby banks to help reduce the amount she needs to spend on her credit card. If I had to buy kind of everything that was here, it would all go on the credit card on top of all the bills that already go on the credit card um, and that would just mount up and be quite a stress really. Summer and her husband both work full time but are having to use credit for their food shop, fuel and energy bills. Keeping on top of their monthly repayments is becoming difficult. It's just all mounting up and it's kind of a worry of if something happened like the car breaks down or like when the heating oil goes up at the moment, the monthly payments are fine. That's what we've been doing. It's not great because then they'll add interest on. A national survey carried out by the Money and Pension Service shows Summer is not alone. Almost a quarter of those who took part said they were relying on credit to either pay for their energy bills or buy food. In Yorkshire and Humber, that's one in five people. And of those using credit, two out of every five were using it for the first time. Borrowing's increased at a steady rate across the region, but what we are finding now is, is there's a new cohort of people needing to borrow on a regular basis. With cost of living challenges, people don't know um, if they're going to be able to manage it over the long term and therefore they're turning to borrowing now and credit that they wouldn't have normally used. Paying more for our gas and electric, rising food costs and interest rates, all are putting a squeeze on finances, creating the perfect storm for people to turn to credit. The big risk, I guess, is that you're going to continue to build up debt. So what happens is, is that it starts off one item and then it continues. And then what happens is, is you then pay the minimum payment. So you're not paying it all back off. So the debt continues to increase. And now we've seen interest rates go up. So that means that the debt is growing even faster. So it can, be a, a, it can end up in a big debt spiral. And that growing debt and how to fix it is something that's causing constant worry for families like Summers. It's kind of scary because we both work full time and we are struggling. It's scary to think that people around us who maybe can't work full time or work part time will be in the same boat, if not worse. And that's scary to think that we are working class people and we still can't afford just the essentials, basically. Emily Knight, ITV News. So as you saw in that report, lots of people are borrowing money at the moment to help them get through the cost of living crisis. Well, earlier I spoke to Richard Lane from the Leeds-based debt charity Step Change to get some advice for anyone finding themselves in that difficult situation. 
Well, sadly, there are millions of people across the country who are struggling to make ends meet during what is a once in a generation cost of living crisis. I'd say there are a few things that people should be doing. Firstly, have you made yourself a budget so you can understand what you've got going out and what you've got coming in? If you are having to turn to credit to pay for essentials, which unfortunately lots of people are, you should avoid turning to high cost credit like payday loans if you can. If after all of that you can't make ends meet with your budget, speak to your creditor, speak to your utility provider, whoever it is you might be falling behind on, they have a regulatory obligation to help you or speak to someone like Step Change because we're there to be able to support you through what I know is very difficult times. How do people know when is the time that their debt is actually getting out of control and they really do need to seek help? Well, debt and credit in and of itself isn't a problem for lots of people. We're all going to use credit throughout our lifetime to, to buy things, particularly big items, whether it's a car or if you're lucky enough to be able to get a mortgage. It's when you're struggling to keep up with those contractual payments, when it's causing you stress, when it's causing you hardship, when maybe you're having to miss some of those payments. It's at that point when we know that it's turning into what we would call problem debt and not just debt that you might have that you can cope with. Unfortunately, we're not very good at talking about money as a country and often we can bury our head in the sands and wait too long to get help. On average, clients who come to Step Change wait about 12, if not 18 months before they get help, even though they know they're in financial difficulty. Our message would be, as soon as you're worried about your finances, you should get the help that you need, get the support that you need, and you'll likely have more options available to you if you do that sooner. So if someone were to contact Step Change, what help can you offer them? So Step Change offers a huge amount of help. Anything from basic budget help, helping you write a budget, signposting you to uh, benefit checkers. You might be entitled to something like universal credit or child support or we can take you through what we call a full debt advice session. So we'll spend some time with you going out, going through your income, coming through, going through your expenditure, trying to figure out who it is you owe money to and finding a tailored solution that will be right for you. But I think in all of those situations, it's important to stress that there is help out there. Richard Lane from Step Change Debt Charity, thank you so much for your time. Yes, lots of great advice there. And of course, if you want some advice about the weather, then who better to have in the studio than our Kerry, who's back? Hey, she missed you the storms. I missed away. you. <laughs> yeah, I missed you both, and I missed the storm. You missed the storm. We Sorry missed about you. that. Um, and I also missed those clear spells today because I said it was going to be cloudy this afternoon, and it wasn't for everybody. We did see some clear spells. Gorgeous, gorgeous shot of Alta Cumulus at the bottom, those rippled light clouds, and higher up, Cirrocumulus flocus, which is the ragged, um, tufted cloud, which is, I guess, indication of hair or wool. That's why they're called flocus. But they're non-rain bearing. They're high up there in the upper atmosphere, and so they don't give us any rain, but they can be an indication of things to come. So there are our clear spells and our cloudy skies and our clear spells during the course of today. We've got this weather front coming through overnight tonight and it's behind that that things are going to feel a little bit chillier as we head into the second half of this week. But look at the lambs, a sign of Aww. spring. So cute. This was in Hoyland in Barnsley. A big thank you to Sandy Nicholson. So cute. So keep the signs of spring coming. But this was yesterday in Ribblesdale in North Yorkshire. A few glimmers of brightness and it was under those clearer skies that we got really mild temperatures yesterday and today in fact 14 yesterday at Ravensworth in North Yorkshire today Hull was our highest 13 the average is about eight or nine tomorrow eight or nine at best but add on that northwesterly as that colder air starts to come in it's going to feel more like four or six celsius so just a little bit below average nothing too dramatic no beast from the east but it will <laughs> feel chilly we'll need an extra layer or two so this is the uh, air masses over the next couple of days and also just to point out that I'll uh, maybe point out a little bit more as we get towards the end of the week. We've got some colder air, yes, but also a northerly, which might come along the coast. And that northerly on the coastline, coupled with high tides, might see some big waves. So just something to point out later on in the week. Right Fantastic. then. Yeah, lovely. Thank yeah, you. No problem. Next to a group of women who are roping in extra help to help them get through the menopause. A charity in West Yorkshire is offering a 10-week dedicated course in sports such as bouldering and climbing thought to be the first project of its kind in the UK. In conjunction with expert advice, it aims to promote physical and emotional well-being. Tina Gelder reports. 
Yes, well, that is Sarah that you can see there making her way up the wall, uh, aided by Spotter Phil. Are you OK there, Sarah? Yes, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> That's excellent news. And Sarah is one of a number of women on this course, this pilot course, that is helping them to navigate the challenges of the menopause. You can see some of the ladies here. This is what is known as the bouldering room. And as you can see, the women are being put through their paces, are having a look at what they have to come. Katie, you are the director of the charity here. What is on offer for these women? So over the course of the next 10 weeks, we've got primarily climbing. So ladies learn a little bit about bouldering and also rope climbing. But then we're interspersing that with information on um, clinical intervention, um, nutrition, and then also Pilates and breathing. What are the benefits? I think the biggest benefit that we've seen is that the ladies coming together, it can be quite a lonely journey whether you're going through peri or menopause, um, but it's ladies really understanding, getting that clinical intervention, more detailed advice and information and really understanding what they're all going through. Katie, thank you. Well, talking of isolation, uh, sorry to disturb you ladies, I was talking to Andrea earlier on, we just heard... Uh, Katie, talk about how solitary it can be when you're going through the menopause. That was a, a factor for you in joining this, wasn't it, Andrea? Yeah, you can do lots of research on the internet by yourself, but you're just siloed, so it's nice to see people that have got in a similar, similar situation to yourself. And Lydia is the chair of the charity, but Lydia, you've got personal experience of this as yes, well, haven't yes. you? Yes, yes. So I've got all the experiences, or not all of them, but I'm um, experiencing a little bit of brain fog and not able to find words when I want to, whereas usually I was a you know, highly functioning business person and mother and I could spin lots of plates, but all of a sudden I find myself grappling. So I really want to help other ladies um, to help their, them with their challenges as well and I'm sure you are helping them because as I say this is a pilot course there are more to come in 2023 it's been going for three weeks hey up Lisa there you are <laughs> how have you been finding it so far how has it helped you it's fantastic it just gives me something to look forward to each week um, it's it, you know obviously the physical benefits build you up but it's the mental benefits as well really helps so you would recommend it absolutely Excellent. Well, you can't say fairer than that. This is the pilot course. There are more courses going on through 2023. And I think you'll agree, this isn't just uh, taking the challenge of the menopause one step further. It's taking it one step higher, too. <laughs> Certainly nice. is. Yeah. Oh, very nice there. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. To Tina Gilder. <laughs> now then, on to football. And Leeds have appointed the former Watford and Valencia boss, Javi Gracia as their new head coach on what's been described as a flexible contract. United are second from bottom in the Premier League and the 52-year-old Spaniard will really only have one task and that's to make sure that the region's only top-flight club avoids relegation. Well, John Hill is at Elland Road for us tonight and John, the new man, has been at the club today, hasn't he? He has, Lara. He arrived at the club this morning to thrash out the terms of this so-called flexible contract at 3.30 this afternoon. Leeds announced he had been appointed, signed on the dotted line, dotted line, subject to this work permit being granted because he's a Spanish and EU citizen, so that paperwork needs to be ironed out. Now, he's a man of some pedigree, basically, for keeping clubs that are performing indifferently away from relegation. So think back five years, he was appointed to Watford when they were just five points above the drop zone in the Premier League. He kept them up, actually took them to the FA Cup final before he was subsequently sacked. He comes in through the indoor at Ellen Road just over a fortnight after the American head coach uh, Jesse Marsh. Well, he exited through the outdoor. Some changes here then. So what do the fans make of it? It needs to uh, instill some passion into the team and some um, some unity. Pleased with the new manager. Yeah, he's yeah. got experience, hasn't he, in the Premier League before, yeah. so I think that'll help him. Yeah, we can't wait to come down and see what happens next. Yeah, it needs the support of the fans because that's what gets the players up. We are the, the 12th man and we're a big club and we deserve to stay up and be in this league, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and John, Leeds are in desperate need of a turnaround in fortunes, aren't they? Uh, they need some good news, you know. You know, if the paperwork does get signed, his first game will be at home against Southampton. They're the relegation rivals this weekend. If they lose that game, they will be bottom of the league. And the omens aren't great because when he took over at Watford, his first match was against Southampton and Watford lost 1-0. But the past isn't the future. The fans here need some good news. John Hill, thanks so much at Elland Road for us tonight. 
Now then, it is of course Pancake Day and you could even be tucking into a stack right now as we speak. So do you flip, do you slide? What's your favourite topping, Laura? Uh, favourite topping? Well, I made some with the kids last night and what went down really well was butterscotch flavoured golden syrup. Oh, you wouldn't want to eat too many of those, a bit sickly. Oh, very nice, though. Oh, well, very nice. Well, children at Pace's School in Sheffield have been making pancakes today in their Life Skills Adapted Kitchen. The specialist school fund raised to move to bigger premises allowed their children with neurological conditions the chance to flourish in a purpose-built environment. And judging by the smiles on everyone's faces, it's the perfect place to flip a pancake. Oh, it certainly is, isn't it? Lovely. They were quite small, though, those pancakes, <laughs> You they? like the big ones, don't <laughs> I'd you? like a much bigger one, yeah. It's Kerry with the weather. Good visibility on the horizon. TUI sponsors ITV Yorkshire weather. Hello again. Yes, so the mild and early spring-like conditions being replaced by back to what we'd expect for the time of year, certainly as we head through into tomorrow. So quite a lot of cloud around this morning. Then we saw some sunshine, then a little bit more cloud around. So generally, disappointingly grey across many parts today, but still on the mild side. We've got this cold front coming through by the end of tonight into tomorrow. Behind that, we've got the colder air. High pressure building to the west, though, and that's going to give us, yes, that cold northerly on Friday, but a mostly settled weekend on Saturday and on Sunday. So as we head deeper into tonight, that weather front will approach northern and western parts, certainly over the dales, the Pennines, some misty low clouds, some dampness here. Elsewhere, cloud coming and going in an odd shower, and we stay in the relatively mild air. So nothing too chilly until that front and the freshening winds start to invade. So as we head through towards tomorrow morning, that's when we're going to start to feel it become colder. 7.11 and 5.29 are your sun time. So disappointingly cloudy and damp and chilly first thing in the morning. But as the day progresses, we'll see more in the way of sunshine but the winds compared to the southwesterly that we've had over the last few days are north to northwesterly and that's going to peg back the feel of the temperatures feeling more like five or six at best tomorrow afternoon in the sunny spells there will be some patchy cloud and showers remaining for south and east yorkshire as we head through into Thursday, for much of the day, it's dry and clear, hopefully. So we'll see a decent amount of sunshine, always blustery and breezy out towards the coast. And this system comes through but clears quite quickly on Friday, but that cold northerly wind. And then high pressure at the weekend, but with some chilly nights to come. TUI sponsors ITV Yorkshire Weather. There you go. That's Thank what. you. Mm. Thank you. No, so you just be careful with that. This is it, isn't it? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, oh yes! yes. <laughs> well done. Well done. That's an improvement on the rehearsal, anyway. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah, I'll see you after news at ten. Bye for now. Bye. Good night. <laughs>